Most people have never been arrested for an offence in their life or taken to the police station for a police interview. Maybe that explains why some don't understand at all why some suspects give a no comment interview and exercise their fundamental and general right to silence. Many expect the suspect to answer all the questions put to them by the police during an interview and if the suspect doesn't answer police questions you tend to hear comments like only the guilty stay silent or if you've nothing to hide just answer the police questions or it's your duty to help the police or you're impolite and rude for not answering perfectly reasonable questions by the nice police officer this is sometimes said by parents when little Johnny's arrested or if you're innocent you would be shouting it from the rooftops not remaining silent. Been there, heard it all before and probably read it again in the comments. Well, if someone thinks that way for every suspect interviewed by the police who gives a no comment interview, then with respect, they're incredibly naive. And for many suspects, those comments just plain wrong. There are in fact very good reasons why a suspect might want to exercise their right to silence and answer no comment or stay silent to police questions, even when they are innocent good reasons which are likely to be the basis to prevent any adverse inference from silence being made if the case went to court. So here's seven good reasons to give a no comment interview which might be the advice given by your lawyer and to be quite frank is expected by the interviewing officer in some of the scenarios mentioned in this video. And with each of those seven good reasons, just imagine for one moment it's you sat in that police interview room suspected of committing a criminal offence, putting yourself in the shoes of the suspect. 1. You might answer no comment to the police questions even when you're innocent because while you know the name of the person who actually committed the crime, you can't and don't want to give the name of the guilty person to the police for fear of reprisals. Therefore, you might answer no comment because if the real culprit found out you've talked to the police, you have a real fear you may be the subject of violence outside the police station or in a prison or worse that the violence might be directed at your family including your children. Think about it, would you talk to the police in that situation? Two, you might answer no comment because you may be in a total state of shock at being arrested, traumatised by being detained in a small cold police cell for hours lacking in sleep, hot food and warmth, away from the comfort of family and concerned about your children's welfare and therefore not in the right frame of mind to answer a series of police questions. In other words, you may not be thinking straight or talking as normal, constantly breaking down in tears. In that condition, you might be very suggestible and vulnerable to giving false information or exaggerated answers to please the police in the mistaken belief you will be released without charge if you cooperate. Don't be surprised if your lawyer advises you to give a no comment interview and make representations to the police that you're not even fit to be interviewed at all and you should be released and interviewed later as a volunteer on another date and time. 3. You might give a no comment interview because your lawyer might be unable to fully and properly advise you to answer questions or not as the police officer has not given them enough information about the basics such as the offence you have been arrested for who's made the complaint, what the allegation is about, or the evidence behind it like CCTV, incriminating messages or witness statements. You might want to hear the police questions put to you first, which might highlight the offence and case against you before making the decision to answer the police questions later in the interview or not at all. 4. You might give a no comment interview because the suspected offence, especially those involving allegations of financial crime, are just too complex or too old to provide an immediate response in a police interview. Imagine being asked questions to account for money transactions from two years ago or explain where you were or what you were doing on a particular date and time. It's not surprising you might not want to answer questions until you've had time to digest the allegations against you and time to think about your movements and transactions, maybe to check your phone where you were. 5. You might give a no comment interview because you have really serious long term mental health issues which affect your capacity to understand the police questions and the consequences of any answers given or even have a grasp of reality that you're even in a police interview there to answer serious allegations against you. So where your lawyer has genuine concerns about your capacity to understand the police interview process they may advise you to give a no comment interview to all the police questions until more is known about your mental state. 
6. You or your lawyer might believe you were unlawfully arrested and falsely imprisoned and so any police interview in custody would also be argued as unlawful, especially if the police have declined to de-arrest you. Giving a no comment interview would again be understandable in this context. 7. You might give a no comment interview because there are absolutely no point answering questions if the police have already made up their mind to charge and take you to court. The interviewing officer, rather than being an investigator of the truth, has a closed mind and the interview is just a tick box exercise or an attempt to get an admission or a confession, the icing on the cake. And yes, sometimes the police officer does say to the lawyer that they have enough evidence to charge and even they think there's no point in the police interview but their superiors have told them to carry out an interview before charging you. There might also be other factors relevant to why someone may answer no comment to police questions. Factors which a lawyer might take into account to advise their client to answer no comment. Here's nine factors to further consider with your lawyer. One. Your defence might involve admissions to some other damaging or embarrassing conduct, but that is not actually illegal, which might lead you to decide to answer no comment to the police questions. For example, at the time of the burglary incident, you were in fact in another location of being intimate with someone who is not your long-term partner. If the case gets to a trial and you're asked to explain your no comment interview, while it may be accepted by the judge and jury as a good reason for your silence at the police interview, don't expect any sympathy for the general defence. 2. As a result of drink and drugs, you might still be suffering from a severe hangover and headaches at the police station and therefore easily confused and liable to make mistakes in answering police questions. Therefore, you're not in a good state to put forward a good account until your headache has worn off. 3. You might have no recollection of the incident in question, whether through drink or drug use. In these situations, just trying to provide an account of an incident, even admitting to being present at this scene, may prove dangerous and therefore might be best avoided until the evidence, if any, is disclosed, prompting some memory of what happened. 4. It might be that there is a need to refer to information that isn't at hand in the police interview to check a defence you might have, an alibi witness or documents or messages to prove your innocence. 5. You might be unfamiliar with the strange environment of police stations, scared and anxious. If you're a young person or a first time arrested person or being interviewed, you may be unsure of not just what to say, but how to say it to be convincing of your innocence. 6. You might not be guilty of the offence that the police have arrested you for, but you might be guilty of another offence, maybe of a lesser offence. For example, you were not involved in the burglary of a car, but you were found as a driver of that stolen car a few days later. Therefore, by answering questions to the main allegation, it may involve making admissions to another offence, and therefore you might think it's best to say no comment. 7. You might not want to implicate someone else in the alleged offence you have been arrested for in order to protect a family member or a close friend, either because you hope that the police won't have sufficient evidence against the other person you're protecting or in the hope that the other person who you are protecting will make their own admissions of guilt. 8. Sometimes the police readily admit they don't have a complaint statement from the initial complainant who made the call to the police and who now doesn't want to cooperate with the criminal investigation or support any prosecution by giving a statement against you to the police. Therefore, it's not clear or guaranteed at the time of your police interview that there will ever be a formal criminal complaint made against you by the complainant or what specifically they're alleging you have done. And so you might not want to answer police questions and thus give a no comment into unless of course you want to confess to your sins and by doing so likely result in a conviction at court based on your admissions or confessions alone in the police interview made courtesy of your comments at the police interview which counts as evidence. 9. If you're someone who doesn't speak English very well or at all, you may be advised to give a no comment interview as you are at a distinct advantage during police interview, even with the interpreter present. Just one word out of place due to the nuance of language can completely change your intended meaning, so you might be advised to answer no comment. Now, just as there are good reasons not to answer questions and factors which might persuade you to give a no comment interview, there are good reasons to answer questions and factors that might persuade you to answer questions even through a prepared statement handed to the police in the police interview. 
So please watch the other videos in the series. What does the police caution at the beginning of an interview mean? How to give a no comment interview and the five police tactic used to try and get you to talk. Should they answer police questions at interview for good reasons? Will the court interpret my no comment interview as a sign of guilt? Remember, each case is different, so always speak to your lawyer before you decide in your case to answer questions or not in the police interview. As always, thank you for watching. Please comment and like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to Community Legal Education to be the first to watch our videos. And may the justice be with you.